Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. I will have links below this video to their sites. Rabbi Shalom Arush, Rabbi Lazy Brody, Rabbi Yossi Pinsrachi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Alon Anavar, Rabbi Yuval Avadi, Rabbi Daniel Asser, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jews for Judaism, and Rabbi David Ashir, and Rabbi Yaron Uvein. As well, if you never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for this soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So today's topic um, is actually related to um, a previous parasha that I... Um, did some video a video on, but I, there was some other information from somebody else that I wanted to share, and it's still applicable. Of course, everything is uh, for us to learn and to grow and inspire us. So, um, this is also from a portion of Kindness by Rosalie Salzman, and I call this the ripple effect of Chesed. So this is um, so from the pasuk in Shmos thirty four seven. It says, "Preserver of kindness for thousands of generations," and that's talking about Hashem. So this verse can be interpreted in two ways. Hashem preserves the good deeds that people have done, and they serve as a merit for future generations. The concept of Zuchus Avos, the merit of the fathers, addresses this. Sometimes Hashem will show someone favor because of something a forefather did. Even our exodus from Egypt as a nation was in the merit of Avon, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So no good deed goes to waste. Sometimes it is rewarded generations later. Another interpretation is that good deeds in and of themselves have a ripple effect. One kind act can start a chain reaction that goes on for generations and centuries. And here's the story how that actually came to be. Very, uh, it's like you get chills when you, after you hear it. So, in Footsteps of the Magid, Rabbi Pesach J. Krohn relates the story of a Mrs. Uh, Reichner, who, in gratitude for his teaching her eight sons, would send a daily package of food to their old rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Lazer HaKohen Katz of Pressburg, when he became too old to teach. She did this as well as including money for holidays for two decades. A generation later, when the Nazis were rounding up Jews to deport to concentration camps, Simach Shemam Zichram, I have to say that, they rounded up Ashi Reichner, one of Mrs. Reichner's sons and his wife, Miriam. Through divine providence, the Nazis disappeared for a few minutes, allowing them to escape and seek refuge somewhere in the city. They ran to the apartment of a Gentile woman called Anna Neni, who was sheltering Jews. And I hear she's pretty well known if you look her up online. It's a-N-N-A, -N -N -A, first name, second, and N-E-N-I. So there they discovered their daughter and her family already hiding. So a total of 14 people hid there for eight months until they were liberated. The apartment was where Ashi's mother had supported her son's Malamid for two decades. So that particular apartment was the apartment of that rabbi uh, that she was helping previously. It's amazing, huh? So Rabbi Krohn writes, Rabbi Shamshin Fall Hirsch notes that the word notzer also means creator causes to blossom. Thus the expression notzer chesed can refer to Hashem's benevolence, in which he allows an act of chesed performed by an individual not to remain merely an entity isolated onto itself, but rather to become a seed for which blossoms forth deliverance and happiness. At times this deliverance is granted to the same individual who performed the original act of chesed. However, there are times when the reward flourishes at a later date for a descendant in a subsequent generation that had happened with the Reichners. Our role is to plant seeds, but it is the Matzmiach Yeshuot, the one who makes salvation flourish, who in his infinite wisdom decides on the eventual emergence of their harvests. So not only does the above story illustrate Zuchus Avos and how one chesed, kindness is paid back by another, it also shows how a place of chesed remains a place where chesed is practiced. Not only can we change a person through chesed, we can change a place. So yeah, the place was the, where the rabbi uh, lived. So it became this. It, 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 it's as if it's as, as if the place retained that energy, so that the woman who lived there she had that same energy. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so I thought that was really like very special, um, and for us to realize that when we do something for somebody or we, uh, you know, for for their benefit, you know, and we think okay, it's just a one-time deal and we don't realize maybe later on that's going to come back to benefit us in another way from somebody else in our family. So so it never hurts to do more chesed. We do, the more chesed we do, the better things will be. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen. And thanks for watching.